Welcome back. You've just seen a carpenter draw an ellipse for use to make a tabletop or possibly a picture frame. An ellipse is the set of all points x and y in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two distinct points, or the foci, and those were the nails in, the, in our video, is a constant. So the sum of those distances, as you saw, was that string that he had that was going around and creating our circular ellipse. The length of the string d1 plus d2 is some fixed length. And in this video, we're going to define an ellipse. We're going to determine the equation of ellipse. We're going to find the equation of an ellipse. And we're going to sketch an ellipse. And we're going to analyze an ellipse. So we've got a lot to do. You will note in our diagram here, the line through the foci, or the two nails, intersects the ellipse at two points. And that is called the vertices. We'll get you to the right diagram here. The line that connects those vertices is the major axis. And its midpoint, the midpoint of the major axis, is the center of the ellipse. And there is a chord perpendicular to the major axis that goes through the center, and that is the minor axis. And everything's labeled in this particular diagram here. We're going to determine the standard equation of an ellipse. Given the following diagram, we can determine the standard equation. An ellipse is made up of all the points x and y, so we've got our x and y, and our center is at h and k. A lot like our center of our circle, a lot like the, the vertex of a parabola. Our a value is the distance from the center of the circle to, the, to one of the vertices along the major axis. a is equal to the distance from the center of the circle, or ellipse actually, not the circle, to the vertex, to a vertex. And this is, of course, on the major axis. And our b value is the distance from the center to, and I'm going to call it the vertex, but it really isn't because it's on the minor axis. So I'm going to put that in quotes on the minor axis. And then we have a value c that's the distance from the center of this ellipse to the foci. So our foci are these particular points here. So our center is at h and k. Our vertices are at h plus or minus a, k, and our foci are at h plus or minus c, k. Note the length of the major axis is 2a. The length of the minor axis is 2b. The foci lie on the major axis. c units from the center with the equation c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And the center of the ellipse is the midpoint of the two foci. And recall your midpoint formula, simply the average of the x's and the average of the y's, or x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. And here's our standard form of the equation of ellipse with a center at hk and the major and minor axes of lengths 2a and 2b, where a is greater than b, and which is greater than 0. So from our formula, again, we can see we've got some perfect square trinomials here. In fact, both x minus h squared and y minus k squared are per perfect square trinomials. And our a squared, which is bigger, a is bigger than b, our major axis is the x-axis because the a is the numerator to the x. Here the major axis is vertical, or our y, because a, which is greater than b, is the denominator to our y. You will notice this looks a lot like the equation of a circle, with that x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. The difference between the ellipse and a circle, if a were equal to b, this would become a circle. 
and then we would multiply both sides by the denominator and get our radius. This is a circle, but our, we have different length radius along the major axis and the minor axis, thus our a squared and our b squared. So that is the difference. The foci lies on the major axis, c units from the center, and c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Note that a squared, again, is the denominator of the major axis, and that's con consistent with our diagram. If our ellipse is centered at the origin, h and k become 0, so we end up with x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, or x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1, depending on which is our major axis. But our major axis will always follow the a squared. And this is what they would look like graphically. So you can see here again, our major axis is the horizontal, our a squared is larger, it's going to be the denominator on x. And with a taller or a major axis vertical, our a squared is the denominator to the y. Our objective three, find the standard equation of an ellipse. Our first sample problem, find the standard form of an equation of ellipse having foci at 0, 1, and 4, 1, and a major axis length is 6. For me, it's easier to begin by sketching the information. So I'm going to just quickly kind of sketch out what this might look like. I'll put some hash marks on here, and I'll color code this. I'll go ahead and I'll put my foci in, in blue. So it's 0 on the x, 1 on the y, 4, 1. So there are my foci are in blue. I, my major axis length is 6. I know my foci lie on the major axis. The foci are 4 units apart. If my major axis is 6, that means my vertices have to be just 1 on each side of my foci. So my vertices, I've already got those listed. Calculate the second part. Calculate the midpoint of the foci to determine the center h and k and the distance from the center to the foci. Quickly using our midpoint formula, you could probably eyeball this pretty quickly. 0 plus 4 over 2, 1 plus 1 over 2, and our midpoint is at the point uh, 2, 1. And we could eyeball that. And we got a vertice here and a vertice there. So the length of our major axis is 6, so 2a is 6, and our a value is 3. Using A and C, we didn't calculate C, but C has got to be 2. C is the distance from the midpoint to our foci, and that's just 2 units. Using A and C, and C squared equals A squared minus B squared, we can calculate B. 2 squared equals A squared, 3 squared minus B squared, so 4 equals 9 minus b squared, so b squared equals 9 minus 4, and we get b equals the square root of 5. So now we have our, our a's, our b's, and our h and our k. Our h and k is 2, 1, so we substitute into the equation of our lips x minus h, or x minus 2 quantity squared, plus y minus 1 quantity squared, all over a squared plus b squared, or 3 squared plus the square root of 5 squared. And simplifying that out, we get our equation of our ellipse. Objective 4, we want to graph the ellipse given by x squared plus 4y squared plus 6x minus 8y plus 9 equals 0. Well, you may recall in our formula, we have perfect square trinomials in our equation. So if we write out our original equation, what we need to do is we need to collect our x's and we need to collect our y's and separate things so we can complete the square. The instructions here, group terms and factor, that's what we're doing. So we grouped our x's. We have x squared plus 6x plus blank, our blank to complete the square. And for our y's, we ended up with 
4y squared minus 8y plus blank. So what we did is we factored out, excuse me, we had 4y squared. So we factored out the 4, and then that left us with y squared minus 2y plus blank. Because when we complete the square, we want to have a coefficient of 1 on y squared. And it looks like we took the 9 and moved that to the other side. So now we complete the square, take half of b and square it. So 6, square, six over 2 is 3 squared, so that's 9. So we add 9 to the right side. We take negative 2 over 2 and we square it, which is just 1. But it's 1 times this 4. So we are adding 4 times 1 to the other side, and that's all featured in this next step, that we add that to the other side. So be careful, because of that 4, we are multiplying our other side by 4, or the number we manufactured. So we have our perfect square trinomial with x, x plus 3 squared, our perfect square trinomial with y, y minus 1 quantity squared equals 4. Then we simply divide everything by 4, and we get x plus 3 quantity squared over 4, or 2 squared, plus y minus 1 quantity squared over 1 squared. So now we know that the x's are major axis. In our narrative, you can see the center is negative 3, 1. The denominator of the x term is our a squared is 2 squared. That's the endpoints of the major axis. Lie two units to the right and left of the center. Similarly, because the denominator of the y term b, b squared is 1 squared, the endpoints of the minor axis lie one unit up and one unit down from the center. So our graph looks something like this. Objective 5. We want to find the center, vertices, and foci of an ellipse. 4x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y minus 8 equals 0. We're going to do a lot of the same things we did in the last sample problem. We're going to gather our x's and our y's. And we see this time when we gather our x's, we have 4x squared minus 8x and our y's, we just have y squared plus 4y plus blank, and I move that 8 to the other side. Well, here we have to factor 4 out of the x's. So that's what they've done. They've factored 4 out of the x's. We complete our square, negative 2 over 2 squared. Uh, we add 4 times 1 to the right side, and then 4 over 2 squared, which is 4 again. We add 4 to the right side. So we can go right to our perfect square trinomials, do our addition. We get 4 times x minus 1 quantity squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared equals 16. We divide every term by 16. And we get x minus 1 quantity squared over 2 squared plus y plus 2 quantity squared over 4 squared equals 1. So now our y is our major axis. We're going to have a longer and taller ellipse here because we're going to, our major axis is going to be the vertical axis. h equals 1, k equals negative 2, that is our center. A equals 4 and B equals 2. So we have the length of along from the center to the vertices on our major and minor axis. And using C squared equals A squared minus B squared, we can calculate C, which is the square root of 12, which we've seen before. That's about 3 and a half. And that is the length from the center to our foci. So let's take a look at what that might look like. If I were to sketch that. Our center is at 1, negative 2. Since the major axis corners, okay, and our A is equal to 4. So our vertices are going to be 4 units 
above, so our vert and below that, so our vertices. That should be one unit lower at negative six. Are about there. The foci are found by using C, so our foci about three and a half units away, so one, two, three and a half, so our foci are in green, one, two, I think I, our full size about here, this is about there. There's my major axis. My minor axis was just two units. So I had points here and here. And the graph of my ellipse looks something like that. And we'll get some more practice graphing and working with the ellipses when I see you in class.